They just keep in the game, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. DreamHack Open 2013. If you left after the Nanny Wall game and you're back, welcome back. If you stayed here the whole time, you're awesome. And let's uh, let's watch some StarCraft 2. Here we are. In game one of this best of three bottom right hand location of Belshire Vestige, I present to you the Red Zerg player, Violet. Representing Team Azubu, of course, Violet. Am I allowed to... I'm wondering what I'm allowed, I'm allowed to say here. Violet initially wasn't... You know, I'm, I'm going to tell this story. Violet initially wasn't being sent to DreamHack, but then his manager paid for it. His manager paid for Violet to go to DreamHack. And if I'm violating, violating anything, any trust issues, I think that was super cool. Because Violet couldn't make it, his manager just paid for him to go to DreamHack. I think it's cool, so I'm going to say it. Um, so that's why Violet's a DreamHack right now. Of course, Violet, pretty famous for going to America to practice and, and hang out in, in, in a time when most Koreans were, were staying in Korea. Um... But then, uh, you know, he, he went over to America, li actually lived there. He actually lived in College Station, and that's where I lived. I lived in College Station um, when I was going to Texas A&M, and so did Violet. So we actually hung out a good amount, um, and that was a lot of fun. And then he, he went back to Korea, and then he had some visa issues. So he's been trying to get back to America for the past, like, year or something, but he's been having a lot of visa issues, so he's been trying to work on that. Um, yeah, so now, here he is at DreamHack. Violet, a very cool person. I encourage you all to get to know him. He's kind of dubbed as, like, the a lot of people calling him American. He's really embraced the American culture as well, which is really cool to see. And his English is actually really good. His English is really, really good. Um, and, yes, for people looking for Naniwa, uh, na both games were six minutes long, and Naniwa won both of them. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And for people saying there's ZBZ on all the streams and it's bad, it's actually really good, especially for my purposes, because I've been playing a lot of Zerg on ladder recently, and I need stuff to do in ZBZ. Um, I've been trying out a lot of new stuff, and I'm, I'm actually intrigued to see what, what both of these players do as they approach this match. Now, we're talking about the map, Belshire Vestige. <sighs> Let's see, there's not a ridiculous amount of airspace, and, and it's not like you can like dip and dodge between bases that much with Mutas. Because you can kind of get yourself trapped in between the first and the third area if you spread it, if you spread along if you spread your bases or if your opponent spreads their bases along the bottom, it's kind of hard to get in between with the mutas. So game resumed. You can talk that about about that a little bit, but you know it's a pretty big map, long rush distance. So longer rush distance means that mutas are going to be a little bit better because they are pretty darn fast. And again, coupled with lings, a big map that's really good. Whereas roaches, hydros, you know, it takes a long time to get across the map. They're kind of clunky getting around. Um, so I feel like, you know, heavy lean play, muta play would be the strategy of choice here. Now, of course, something that can kind of negate that is, is, uh, you know, Nidus play. But in the top left, let's introduce him. We got the Blue Zerg player, Prospect. Now, I don't know a lot about him, and that's kind of the story behind DreamHacks. There's a lot of guys, a lot of up-and-comers who, um, we got a spawn equal first. Interesting Violet drone scouting, too. We'll talk about that in a second. But Prospect, you know, it's in DreamHack, anyone can play, right? So this is one of those guys who... Um, you know, who we don't necessarily know a lot about, but that's what makes Dream Hack great, right? You know, there's that open aspect where players can come in and make a name for themselves. So we'll have to see how Prospect does here. Now, Violet Drone Scouting here, which is really interesting, because a lot of their players won't do that. Instead, though, we'll just rely on their Overlord, getting to their opponent's natural expansion, finding out what it is. Oh, okay, so it was a 15 hatch first. Okay, so very standard play from both these guys. Um, pool, no, pool is a little bit faster there from Prospect. I wasn't watching completely... It's very strange. So Pool's going to be a little bit in front, uh, ahead for Prospect. Gas count is very similar. Violet is actually ahead in gas, even though his opponent got the pool first. So Prospect's going to be able to get a queen out first, which means more larva a little bit earlier, which isn't going to have a lasting effect on this game. So again, pretty pretty similar openings from both of these players. But anyway, most players will rely in ZBZ on this overload getting across the map. Now Violet decided to drone scout. That shows that he just wants to play really safe. He is sacrificing his economy a little bit. Um, by sending that drone to scout out across the map, especially at the, you know, before the three minute mark of the game, if you're sending a drone in, that's one of your first 15 drones. That's one of your first 14, 13, 12 drones. So that, that, that's a decent amount of your economy. So, you know, it is a little bit of an investment, but just wanted to play really safe. What he was trying to do there was identify, okay, is my opponent going, is, is my opponent going for an early pool? Basically in ZBZ, you want to get your pool a little bit later than your opponent. You know, not dramatically later, just a little bit later just to get the drone advantage. Um, just get the economic advantage, right? So, generally, if you've got your opponent getting a 10 pool, you want to get like a 12 pool or 13 pool. If you've got your opponent getting a 14 pool, you want to get a 15 hatch. 
right? Does that make sense? If you're scouting your opponent getting a 15 hatch, you wait until like 17 drones to get your pool instead of getting it like right after you get your 15 hatch. So a lot of interesting stuff happens there in ZVZ as far as just trying to get that drone advantage because every single drone is so important in this game. Uh, and already we're seeing Violet a little bit ahead. Just, just a little, not a huge deal, 25 to 24, but Prospect has five drones of production. And this is due to that er the earlier queen, remember? Larva is going to be a little bit better. Meanwhile, Violet's first injected bath finish. Ooh, a really fast layer. Whoa. Okay, so Violet's going for a super fast layer. Now, this is a this is okay. Where to start? Where to start with this? A lot of players love the meta, right? Faster layer means faster meta. That's my initial thought. Second thought: layer this fast, five minute, five thirty, very risky. If Prospect decides to go for a fast speed build with Banelings, pushes across the map, is hyper aggressive, he could win, right? Um, it's going to be up to Violent to control properly. As Banelin is down, Spinecrawler playing very safe. He has, at any time, he can make Banelins. Right now, he's not because he has an Overlord outside his opponent's natural expansion. If we look at Violent's vision here, he can see exactly when Speedlings go across the map. We see a, an Overlord checking on the gas right here, checking on the gases, watching this area, see if any Lings run by, watching for a drone running to the third base. Also see an Overlord right here, watching if Lings come out in this direction, this direction. Belshi Vestige, the map is long enough where you can identify that and make Banelings back home and be safe. We see Prospect making 16 Zerglings, so we're going to have to see how Violet reacts. Violet taking all of his gases, spires down, adding a spine, so he smells something. He definitely smells something here. Violet smells something. Um, getting that second spine color, playing very safe. Let's go to his vision. I just want to go to his vision really quick, see when he identifies this, and see how he reacts. Now he sees the links. Look at his mini app. We're on Violet's vision right now. He saw it on the mini app. Now the Banelings go in production. We're on Violet's vision. Let's see how else he reacts. Another spine collar going down. Moving his overlords in position. You want to be able to spot where these Banelings could be made. And he wants to make sure to get the good detonations. That was a motorcycle. Four spine crawler going down here for Violet. And Prospect, Prospect pushing across the map. Spire almost done. So Violet's going to have to use some gas to defend this off. Now he needs to be able to spot. This is so many Banelings. Prospect investing so much into this. Violet, I think he might need a full wall off to it. Four spines. Now he sees all the Banelings. Let's see how he reacts. He needs more. He needs more. Four more Banelings in production. Very short moment. Prospect needs to win with this push. Investing so much into the Banelings. Charging for it. Trying to get right to the middle line. Violet with some decent drones, but so far the spine crawl is doing so much damage. Three Banelings remaining. A lot of Banelings about to finish up here for Violet, and he's going to deal with it. He's going to clean it up. Now, Prospect still with a lot of Lings in production, and Violet knows about this. Spire just about to finish. He has 400 gas. He can make some meters right now, but he might decide to make some Banelings just to stay extra safe. Three Spine Crawlers at his front door. I think Violet's fine. Prospect making drones in production, making a layer. He's transitioning. Income tab, 30 to 28 in favor of Prospect. Prospect has the advantage in that regard. Speedlings might try to run by Violet, has to be careful. Five meters in production. I'd make maybe one Baneling, maybe one or two, just to be very safe. Like, he sees all these lings. I think one or two Banelings would be fine, but Violet might be trying to save all of his gas from Mutas. But honestly, I would spend some money on drones and some Banelings at this point. Uh, but here we go. Mutas coming forward, taking out over the Speedlings, know what's going on. These speedlings could get dangerous. I'm still a little bit worried. They can still run. Oh, okay, there are two banelings. See, there are two banelings. I didn't see these. So, good job, Violet. Good job, Violet. So, Mita's going to be starting to look for overloads across the map. Now, Prospect knows this is happening. Here's what's going to be important. Can he hold this third base? Violet doesn't necessarily know about that, but he's going to find out soon. He might even send his Mita straight there, but honestly, I would send my Mita straight to the drones, see what kind of damage I can do, and then go to the third. He's going to take out this overlord. See, I like how Prospect was dropping creep there. He wanted to put a spore there, extend some creep. He needs to get creep to this third. He has to get creep to his third base so we can put a spore crawler there. Meanwhile, we should be seeing spore. Okay, so one spore at the natural, two spores there. One spore in the main. He's going up to Spire as well. Violet is going to identify this. Violet is going to identify this. Queen's coming forward. Oh no, one queen getting taken out. Let's see if the second one goes down. Prospect right now, he, well, he's trying to hold this third. He's trying to delay time, right? He's sending those speedlings forward to try to get Violet to be distracted. Already distracting three of them, a good job there. But Violet's sending a bunch of links across the map, trying to prevent this from happening. Also working on plus one air uh, armor. Spire about to finish here. Prospect has 1,000 gas. If he can get some mutas out, he might be fine. Um, but Violet doing a great job so far. He needs to kill his third hatchery. It's so important. Spore probably coming forward. Two Banelings coming in here from Violet. Nice surround there from Prospect. 
And the Spore Crawler is going to get targeted down, actually, by Violet. Violet takes it out. Only a Queen there to defend. But we do have eight Mutas in production here for Prospect. There are eight Mutas here from Violet, but this third might end up falling. Meanwhile, Prospect going to be countering across the map. He needs to identify this third, perhaps attack that. If you're getting attacked by Mutas, something you can do to try to keep your opponent back home is counterattack. Keep counterattacking, keep counterattacking, keep counterattacking. Get your opponent to pull their Mutas back so you can uh, so you can secure third base, so you can set up your own defenses back home. Now we're starting to see Mutas in production here from Prospect. We got 12 Mutas for Violet, 9 for Prospect. We got plus one armor for both of these guys. A little bit ahead for Violet, but now Prospect is going to start hunting across the map for those Mutas. Now here's what's going to be really important. The Ling Baneling Ore is on the ground. Can you defend your third while killing your opponent's third? Violet has four Banelings here, five Banelings here. Plenty of Ling's a great move. If, you're no, if you know it's going to be Muta versus Ling, you got to get some safety Banelings involved. They can help you a bunch in the long run if you get some key detonations. Speaking of which, the Banelings, oh my god! Every Ling dying there for Prospect. Huge blunder. Oh, those links are so important. First of all, to kill your opponent's third base. Second of all, to defend your own third base. And now what's going to stop Violet's links and Mutas from just being absolutely ridiculously destructive? And Prospect has to remake those links. Those are links that he's remaking that could be drones. Which Violet, he's going to start taking the drone lead. So great detonation there from Violet. That's exactly what he needed. Now he's going to start multitasking, poking in at the natural expansion. I'm still blown away by how fast Violet got that layer. So, so fast. Really cool play, though. Um, you know, he got speed, he got his Baneliness, and then he got the layer. So it's not crazy fast. But, uh oh Mita's going to be engaging here. What do we got? 15 versus 15. Violet with a 114 to 86 supply advantage. Looking so good in this game. But Prospect holding his own. I, I like I like Prospect's play so far. Definitely holding his own. Mita's still going to be scurrying across the map on the right-hand side. Ling's going to be running by into the natural, into the main... And Prospect has no defenses in this location. He's got some spore cars, but spores don't work against mutas or against lings. And the mutas taking advantage, poking at the third, getting Prospect to pull the mutas back, which means he has to rely on lings to defend this. But look at how many drones are falling. Another tragedy here. 19 workers kill. Income 57 to 26. And this is becoming a checkmate situation. Prospect is going to engage with these mutas, but Violet feeling confident, going to be surging forward. So many is on field. Give you a GG at any moment, guys. There it is. GG Violet taking the victory in 15 minutes, 30 seconds. Congratulations to Violet. Very well played. That was actually a really cool game. Um, so it started off with Violet going for the super fast layer, going for really tech heavy style, right? really going fast in the tech, which means he's not investing that much into his army necessarily at that point. He's not necessarily investing a lot into his economy, just teching up as fast as possible. Now, What's important there is being able to identify exactly what his opponent was doing. Because right when he identified, first of all, he had like two or three spines just to be safe, which I think is fine. What you're worried about is gas at that point in the game and drones. You want to get full drone saturation and you want um, you want a lot of gas to get a lot of mutas out. And then he spotted what was coming, made a lot more bangs, defend what was coming, had those overlords in proper locations. 